Hey everyone, what is good? Welcome back to the channel. This is Silver Hyena, and for today's video, just because the apocalypse is upon us doesn't mean you still can't eat good. If you're lucky, you might still find some gluten-free whole wheat pasta on the shelves. Okay, so that might not be what we're making today, but keep an eye out. You got a better chance of finding some pasta, sauce, and good food than toilet paper at this point. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so to start off, get your helping hands. That's very handy because, well, I'm filming, so he's cutting, which is great for me, actually, especially since I just got off a really long day of work. <laughs> so you wanna start off with your garlic. Two whole heads of garlic. Two whole things of garlic, whatever you want to call them. The, the point is, you want a lot of garlic. This is not a vampire friendly meal. Sorry, vampires, it's just the way it is. Deal with it. Blood sucking parasites. Once you're done with the garlic, then you want onions. A nice, big, white onion. Cannot go wrong with a good onion. Look at that, that's a good onion. Now then, if you so prefer, you can use a yellow onion, sweet walla walla, red, what, whatever onion you prefer. And of course, you gotta try not to cry. Okay, once you've got your chunky veggies, then like you can throw them in a ninja if you're really, really lazy, like I and my helping hands are. Or, or you could always just chop them up with a knife if you're old school like that, but we being lazy today. Plus, we also have picky eaters in the house who, if there's so much as a single little chunk of vegetable in anything, I don't like it, I'm not gonna eat it. So, this will puree it into a fine, indecipherable paste. So, this is how you take care of picky eaters. They don't need to know what all goes into the sauce. Just get them to play Fortnite or something. Whatever games they play, just get them to play those games. Keep them out of the kitchen, keep them out of the way. So that way you can carry on with your master plan and fool them. See that? That'll cook down into the sauce. No one needs to know it's there, except for you. All right, so you want either a dry red wine or an Italian red wine. For this, we are using a nice Chianti. But there's no fava beans, so sorry about that. Maybe next time. So you wanna measure that out. About one cup of it will, eh. I can't talk today, and I haven't even touched the wine, I promise. About one cup ought to do it. Dump it in your sauce pot, get the vents going, make very annoying noises. Very important. Pour in your onion and garlic puree. Yummy, yummy. Get that all mixed in there. This is gonna make a fantastic sauce. Next up, you need your spices. You got your oregano and you got your Italian. So you want three tablespoons of each. You got to have your sauce seasoned. Mm, that smells so freaking good. Once you got your seasoning, just put it in your mixture. Let that flavor permeate. Yeah, hopefully you're still able to find the spices you need on the supermarket shelves. 
I mean, I swear, everybody discovered just how bland and boring canned food is again after not eating it for a while. You can't find seasoning hardly anymore. So hopefully you've either already got some or you're actually able to scrape up what you need off the grocery store shelves. All right, next up, you got your two 15 ounce cans of tomato sauce, whatever brand you prefer, and your two eight ounce cans of tomato paste. This ain't no ragu, we're making sauce from scratch out of canned tomato sauce and paste. So totally hardcore. Trust me, you eat this, you'll never be able to touch a can of SpaghettiOs again. Not that I would ever wish that on anyone. Ew. So you gotta mix that all in there. You want those flavors to permeate. Okay, now you gotta get your tomato paste ready. This stuff can be a real pain in the butt. It's like a jar of cranberry sauce. Just plunk that bad boy right in there. And you wanna set your heat to relatively low, just to avoid that whole mud pot effect boiling bubbles. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay. And uh, just a tip. As soon as you get those nice little uh, splatters there on the lid, it's time to turn things down to a simmer. So while your sauce is busy simmering, and making a mess of the lid. Now you wanna get your ground turkey ready. However, if you're not into ground turkey, you can always use ground beef, you can use Italian sausage, which is one of my personal favorites, or you can use whatever freezer burnt monstrosity is hiding at the bottom of your freezer. Whatever works. All right, so into a pan with a light coating of olive oil in there, just scrape your preferred animal flesh inside. And yes, I know I probably sound very, very carnivorous. That's because I am. Mm. It's gonna be some good hecking food. Now, you wanna brown that meat. Oh yeah, don't forget to check the sauce every once in a while. Kind of a big deal. Quick way to Drain off your meat. Add a bit more seasoning. You're good to go to continue the browning process. some butter to your pasta water. Help make it a little bit slicker. 
and you can also see when it's getting hot. Although you could also try sticking your finger in there. <laughs> Just kidding, don't do that. Hopefully I don't need to teach you guys how to boil water. I really hope I don't have to. Now then if you want some accompaniments to your lovely spaghetti, you can always just get some store-bought breadsticks. Like I said, we're fancy, but we're not that fancy. Just brush some olive oil on there. Mm, look at that. Who needs Olive Garden? Okay, never mind. Olive Garden, you get unlimited salad and breadsticks. Alright, now you want to season up those bad boys with some nice garlic powder. Mm. Remember, this is very, um, not vampire friendly. Keep the blood suckers away. So back to the sauce, once again by popular demand. Now you want to add a little bit of sweetener to it. About three tablespoons of uh, stevia, sugar, Splenda, whatever your preferred sweetener is. You do want a little bit of sweet in here to help cut through the acidity. Trust me, if you forget this step, you're going to notice that something is off. Meanwhile, now you got to get those diced tomatoes. Just pour the whole thing in there. You got to mix it all up. Just be careful not to let the sauce splatter you because it will hurt. It's almost like lava, but not quite like walking on the sun. Not yet. If your water comes to a boil, Throw in your pasta. Also remember to read the directions on the back of the box as pasta brands vary. Don't forget to set your timer. Okay. So try not to burn yourself on the pot there. And just accept the fact that the stove is gonna be a mess. But we gotta taste this, make sure it's right, you know. Trying so hard not to burn myself because this stuff is hot. Mm. That is so rich, so flavorful. Post below if you want to eat this. And if you don't post, I'll just assume that you want to eat canned ravioli. Mmm. Mmm. That's so good. Mmm. Yep, very important. You gotta test those noodles. Make sure that they're noodle and not crunchy, you know? Okay, this pot is pretty cool. It's a pain in the butt to wash, but this pasta pot is actually pretty neat. In which you just lift it up, instant strainer. But like I said, washing it, hey! Then just Dump all of that into the sauce. Just dump it in there. Now you just mix it in to finish off the cooking process. Forget the bread. Just pop it in the oven at around 450 for Roughly five minutes ought to do it. Just brown it up. You're good to go. Woo! Look at that. Lovely, lovely golden brown anti-vampire breadsticks. They're beautiful. Alrighty, here we are. Perfection on my finest of styrofoam plates. Now you can top it off with some Parmesan cheese, whatever you prefer. And yes, Parmesan cheese out of a bag is just fine, even if your Italian grandmother says otherwise. Mm. Okay, let's give this a try now. 
I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Look at that. Mm, this is good eating right here. Mm. 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 That is nice and hot. Mm, that's for sure. You can really taste the garlic and the onion puree in there. Mm. Meat. Wonderfully seasoned and the tomato. Oh my gosh. It is just so good. Mm. The perfect accompaniment to the apocalypse. Of course, another perfect accompaniment would be a nice red wine or a nice pink Moscato. However, if you're like me and uncultured, a Coke Zero is just fine as well. Of course, you can always make it a little bit more cultured if you get what I mean. Nice whiskey and Coke, anyone? Anyways. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Post below, will you use this recipe? Or do you just want the Coke and whiskey? Either one is fine. <laughs> and now my cameraman is laughing. <laughs> I don't think he was expecting that. <laughs> now I'm giggling. Anyways, this is Silver Hyena signing off. And for the love of all, that is good and gravy. Stop buying all the damn toilet paper! Have a good one, everybody. Bye.